I don't know who it was that said that life is a health hazard, but certainly uh, to survive to the uh, present time, we human beings have experienced uh, a lot of trauma. And most of the trauma that we have, somehow most of the damage that happens to us physically or emotionally, heals and so often is forgotten. But some trauma, some traumatic experiences persist, they live on. And it's not necessarily the dimension of the trauma, some people have massive trauma and just somehow manage to pick up and uh, get on with their life, and other people have something much less overwhelming and yet it can persist and be very debilitating. So because each human being is an individual, it's going to be helpful for us and helpful for our clients when we look with each individual client for what's missing for them, what resource there's probably an abundance of in the part of their life that's functioning, in their leisure activities, in their enjoyment, pastimes, but is uh, often conspicuously absent in the uh, problem areas of their life where some of this trauma of the past is still very active. Now, instead of assuming uh, an overall theory for all trauma for all people, if we have the question, what's missing for this person, we can find that sometimes people are overwhelmed by the thought of the trauma they begin to recall an event and the emotion that is part of that, the emotions, the cluster of emotions, are so uh, intense and so potentially overwhelming that it feels like they're going to be overtaken by a tsunami. And so, not surprisingly, they pull back from that and so it feels like they're always on the edge of something. So that if someone is overwhelmed by the emotional component of the trauma, then it might be helpful to ask them to, in a hypnotic way, dissociate from the emotions and look at the event in a, a, in a detached, dissociated, unemotional way to just look at the event. And when that happens, it's not uncommon for someone who has been kind of frozen. Bill O'Hanlon talks about frozen in time. And there's something about an overwhelming trauma that, that stills the action. And although cognitively the person moves on, in their awareness they move on, there's some part of their experience, some part of their emotion that's stuck back in that time. And by allowing a, a way for someone to to get through that, to complete that, to let that come to a conclusion and to recognize sometimes for the first time in an, in an emotional way to really know that they survived it, that they came through, they got through it, can be healing in itself. Uh, so often someone will say, I know I survived it, but it feels like I don't know, it feels like the accident, the incident is just there. At any moment, it could happen again. So, uh, helping someone to deal with a potentially overwhelming emotion can be healing. Sometimes, the flashbacks are so intrusive that they interfere with someone's life, so helping them to forget that can be useful. Um, there's so many different ways that, that we can help someone with the trauma, help them to complete it. And one of the ways also is to revisit the event, not in a fact-finding way, not in an attempt to seek out the real truth of what actually happened, but even to go back as an adult and have some editorial flexibility so that someone can actually imagine that something different happened or that the trauma didn't happen or that something else may have happened 
in its place. And I've had that experience uh, with people a number of times that's been so helpful. And they will typically say, I know I just imagined that. I know that what we've just been through didn't really happen. But it's changed how I feel. And very frequently uh, that change is welcome and beneficial in the healing process. The client that uh, shared her experience with us in the demonstration to follow as a student in a program and was very generous in allowing us to share such a personal event and to witness the healing that was so apparent at the time and has persisted since. So we're very grateful to her generosity in allowing us to be present to her experience for our learning and for the benefit of our clients. Yep. Linda, thanks for being willing That's to That's okay. That's right. And uh, is it okay to record yes. this for future think teaching so. purposes? Yeah. You can change your mind. You know. Okay. Uh, At any point. Yeah. Well, up until now. Oh, okay. Up <laughs> until just then. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So tell us about some things that have been fun for you. You, you like the beach, you, you were saying. You like, yes. What do you like doing on the beach? Is that sitting there, swimming, running? Or? Um, walking along, rollerblading yeah. along the beach, um, just lying on the beach in mm -hmm. the sand. Mm -hmm. um, you like feeling warm? Mm. Like the warmth? Mm -hmm. mm, I do, yep. And um, I've been really enjoying yoga lately as well. I've just oh. kind of got into yoga. And what have you been enjoying there? What's been um, the experience there that's been enjoyable? The feeling of um, feeling strong and energised uh -huh. and... Like, like that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> like that, yeah. That's an unusual yoga <laughs> position. <but laughs> um, yeah, yet still feeling kind of calm and centred. Calm and strong. Yeah. It's a nice combination. Mm, it is, yeah. Enjoyed that feeling. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, how long have you been learning? Yoga? How long have you been um, exploring this? I explored it last year for some mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. and then I had a break probably for about six months. Oh yeah. And then I've just rediscovered, and just the last month or so, been re-exploring. Yeah. Okay. And there's something over the last month that's that's been helpful to you. That's that you're connecting with somehow. Yeah. The strength or the calmness. Or, yeah. Or all of those things. Okay. Sounds nice. Yeah, it is. Mm. It's really nice. <coughs> when you're lying on the beach, do you like to be in the strong sunlight or is it, you're not worried about getting sunburnt or not any problem with that? No, I don't usually get sunburn. I'm quite tan, like mm -hmm. olive complexion, but I put sun tan screen on. Oh, yeah. Sunscreen, yeah. Yeah, well, there's been some talk recently about people having trouble not being in the sun enough. Mm. It's in vitamin deficiency. Right? Yeah, yeah, vitamin D, 15 minutes a day. 15 minutes a day? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right, any other questions on that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, you said that, that you're wondering about <coughs> memories, that there are some things that you can't remember or mm. that you'd like to remember? Or Yeah. Um, You've got some <gasps> misgivings about remembering? No, I, I um, don't really have memories from before the age of seven, which oh, yeah. was the time when my mother died. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't really remember her or much about her at all, except from what I've heard oh, yeah. in store, you know, people and photos and stuff. So, <laughs> and for a number of years, I've really wanted to be able to get some of those memories or remember mm. bits of her and um sure she was your mother yeah yeah apparently yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's what you're told yeah that's yeah. what i'm told mm. yeah 
Right. <clears throat> it would be nice to have the experience of that, to connect with the feeling of that and have some sort of sense of reality about that. Mm. Now, you probably know that in hypnosis it's not a way of, it's not a truth trap, it's not a way of finding what actually happened. It's not mm. a matter of uh, kind of finding a, a videotape of your past and playing it so that you can look at it. It's not that. Mm. In hypnosis we have the opportunity to imagine and to be creative about that and imagine something can be helpful, can be useful, can be healing, can be a relief, mm. but it's not a way of getting to any actuality. So I, I know that you know that, but I just wanted to be clear about that. Mm. And I wonder whether you notice that already some changes are starting to happen in your experience? You notice that you're starting to feel quite a little calmer or mm -hmm. quieter or somehow? There's some stillness in your body already? Mm -hmm. except you for, I do, except Brendan's foot. <laughs> Brendan's foot? Yeah, <laughs> sorry. So it might be nice if you kept that foot going. Yeah, maybe. So <laughs> So they're all going can, now. Right. So <laughs> they're just giving you an opportunity to experience that so that you can get through it, like some physical discomfort. Yeah, true. <clears throat> and uh, it might be interesting also to notice that out of the corner of your eye. Mm. And I don't know whether you'll notice when it stops or whether you stop paying attention to it. or Whether something of your experience is more in the foreground. In Brendan's foot or other people's feet or other things that more in the background. Mm. And you, I know and you know that that comes and goes. It's not like a turning off a switch. It's a fluid kind of experience, eh? Yeah. And what are you starting to notice now? Mm. I'm probably breathing a bit calmer. Okay. Like, yeah. And it might be interesting for you to notice that not only are you breathing a bit calmer, but there is something about your breathing that actually allows you to feel calmer. Mm -hmm. Almost as if there's something in the air, which in itself, without you needing to do anything, that's it. It's like you can absorb that. In the same way as when you're lying on the beach and you feel the warmth of the sun, you don't need to do anything, you can just absorb that warmth. It's a passive experience. And you can screen out anything that you don't want. You don't want to be too calm. You don't want to be too quiet. Too anything. But to know that you can enjoy that's right. Just the right amount of enjoyment. Mm. It's nice to smile, but we don't want you breaking up laughing. Because <laughs> <coughs> if you can laugh all the time, we might as well have your sister here. <laughs> That's true. So, as I'm talking, and as this experience, as it, which is your experience, can continue in any way that's useful to you and helpful to you. You might notice that even though you can hear what I'm saying, you don't need to listen. And sometimes what I'm saying can be in the background. And you probably don't remember that when you first learned to walk, there were things that you learned pay attention to and to feel and to notice as an experience. Sometimes when a child is first learning to walk, they curl up their toes as if they're trying to hang on to the floor with their toes so they don't fall off. And they don't know at first. So they try and hang on to the floor with their toes and they use their whole body to 
try to not fall off the floor. And it's amusing to think that a child might be worried about that. But all of those insecurities are forgotten as that learning to walk becomes just such a natural part of your experience. And when you walk along the beach, there's so much <coughs> that you bring to that walking. There's so much learning that you have within your experience that you're not necessarily aware of, but it's there. And you don't need to remember the times that you fell over and hurt yourself and cried that you were learning to walk. That's in the past. And if you were to look at it, I was mentioning before that my son Patrick, when he was, I don't know how old, maybe 10 or 11, <coughs> cut his chin. I remember he was bleeding. I don't remember whether he was crying. He probably was. But if he were to look at that scar now, he wouldn't cry. He might even smile if he could find it. So it's nice to know that our memory is selective. We don't need to remember everything. Don't need to remember things that are painful or distressing. We can remember the things that are pleasing. And I wonder if in some way you could imagine that time could pass backwards, just like you were walking along the beach in the opposite direction. And even though each step that you take takes you closer to something, it also takes you further away from something. And if you could imagine walking through time, back through time, just like walking along the beach, and I wonder if you could remember something that might have happened to you that was really pleasing about the age of 15 or 14 or 16. Can you remember something that might have happened around that time that was pleasing? <laughs> um, I'm just thinking of my first kiss. Your first kiss? Yeah. <laughs> Is this something that we can discuss publicly? <laughs> Oh, it's very funny. <laughs> Don't need to go into all the details. <laughs> but there's something about that that's... It's like this. Mm. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. So you kept all the rude bits well and truly separated. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know that's about important. those things. Yeah. <laughs> and at the time, it wasn't funny, I imagine. It was quite scary. Quite scary, yeah. yeah. But you survived it. <clears throat> Mm. Yeah. And when you look back now, <clears throat> you did more than survive it, you can look back and really enjoy how it is now looking back on how it was then. Mm. Yeah. And I wonder if there's something else that you can recall that happened when you were in primary school that was really, that made you feel really good. Late primary school. Maybe grade five. Or um. You don't have to go looking for something, just uh, be curious and some pleasant memory will just drop into your awareness. I changed schools at that time and oh, yeah. I made new friends ah. and. Yeah. Um, I remember this one particular friend who I made, who her name was Linda as well. Mm -hmm. and she was the big Linda and I was the little Linda. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we used to spend a lot of time together. Okay. And we were going to the botanical gardens with her. What, what was nice about that time? What was made it so special? Um, you enjoyed being with her? Yeah, it was kind of like 
the two of us were opposites and yet we had a lot of similarities connected mm. yeah mm -hmm. used to go to the botanical gardens mm. Mm -hmm. used to grandma used to take me all the time oh. and what did you do there um we'd walk around and we'd have lunch at the the cafe and we'd feed the swans and oh. And I wonder if you might remember one particular time when you were there, when maybe it was a sunny day. You're there with your grandma and Big Linda. <laughs> Any particular day that you can? Um, uh, I'm just remembering a time when yeah. we we were singing Wham songs. <laughs> 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 mm. um, and what song are you singing? I, I, if you sing I can't it, remember the song. I no, just but know. you can remember the feeling. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't well, funny. No, we just sang it like five thousand times yeah. over and over. Yeah. You really got into that. Uh, yeah. Into the singing of it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. There was something about that that was. And is the sun shining as you're singing that? Are you singing it? To the swans or to each other or <laughs> we're kind of skipping down the path. Oh yeah. What's that like to skip down that path? Mm. How does that feel? Good. Yeah. What's the good feeling? Kind of freedom and Yeah. It's nice to nice to remember that <coughs> feeling of freedom, isn't it? Mm. And that feeling of being able to skip down the path. Mm. And the feeling of singing those Wham songs, even though you don't remember the words now, <laughs> you can remember the experience. Because mm. that's what's important. It's not the details, it's the experience that's important. So now, <clears throat> I'd like you to imagine, and it might be an imagined rather than a remembered thing. And at first, you might be not sure whether you're imagining or remembering. <coughs> whether you're remembering something that you've imagined or whether you're imagining something that you've seen from a photograph. But let, just let something come into your mind when you're about four or five or three. Maybe, is there a photograph that you've seen that comes to you with some, some situation that someone's told you about? Um, Dad's got this kind of big blown up photo of me um. A blown up photo of little Linda. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm kind of just sitting there, I was really so <laughs> <laughs> so little, huh? <laughs> yeah, I was being chubby. Like a balloon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know how old I was. No. What's your guess when you look at that photo now? What do you... Mm, that photo is probably three, two, yeah, yeah. something, I don't know. So could you imagine that you could look at little Linda you can look at the photo and imagine that you're not looking at a photo, you're looking at her. Sitting, is she sitting on a chair or what? What's she doing? No, just, What's she doing? just she's kind of sitting with her legs. Sitting on the floor? Like that, on the floor, yeah. Oh, okay. What's she wearing? Well, the one, I think she's wearing just some jammies or something. Oh, yeah. There's, I'm confused between if, there's one that I'm, nude as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's all right to be nude when you're that old. <laughs> no, that was from last week. So. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, no. I Better not talk about that one. Let's get no. <laughs> one the pajamas on, hey? But what sort of the, what are these jowlies like? Um, it's a black and white photo, so yeah. I don't know. No, you can imagine. You can colour it. An imagination. Yeah, I could. Yeah. Um, I imagine they'd be kind of pinks. Oh, okay. And is there a pattern on? Are they striped or flowers or what? Mm, kind of. Um, yeah, like that. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> I don't need to know, but you can know. Mm. And as you're looking at that little Linda sitting there with those pajamas, pink colours and that 
whatever that is. You look at her, she's sitting there, really quite chubby. <laughs> when you look at her, how does she look to you? She's quite cute. Yeah, she is quite cute. <laughs> and when you look at her and you do that with your face, what do you feel like doing? I just feel like cuddling her, I yeah. guess. Yeah. yeah. And it's going to be okay to cuddle her because she knows who you are in a way. I don't know who you actually are to her, but can you imagine doing that? Mm. Cuddling her? Mm. And what's it like for her to be cuddled by you? Mm. Is that all right? Does she like that? How do you know? She's got a big smile. Oh, okay. And she can have a big smile. And how do you feel? There's some tears about that. Do you feel sad about that or is that touching you or what? Touches you? Mm. Yeah. Is that okay to feel like that? Mm. Now, if you were to look at little Linda, is she sitting on your knee? How are you cuddling her? Are you just holding her? How are you, how are you cuddling her? Mm. I'm kind of pick, picked her up. Okay. And she feels cuddled by you, yeah? And you can notice how it is for her. I wonder if somehow you could, and I don't have any idea how you could do this, but somehow imagine that from little Linda's point of view, as she is being cuddled by you, it could feel to her as if she's being cuddled by a mother. Could you imagine that she's having that experience? And where are you as you imagine that? you looking on or are you her, are you that little girl or where are you? Um, <clears throat> um, I don't know, I'm kind of part of both. Part of both. Is that okay? Yeah, it's a little strange. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay? <coughs> yeah, part of both. What both are you part of? Part of one part of both is little Linda, mm. and what's the other part of both? Mm. Part of my mother, yeah. I guess. Yeah, you are part of your mother. Yeah. Yeah. And so you can, and it doesn't make logical sense, but you can at the same time have the experience of cuddling little Linda and being cuddled by your mother being little Linda, being your mother, there's a kind of a motherly kind of connection there, isn't there? Mm. How does that feel? <coughs> kind of good, weird. Good? Weird. Good, weird, yes. Now, if for the moment <coughs> you could just imagine that you are little Linda, and you look and you see that you've been cuddled by your mother, when you look at your mother, what do you see? What does she look like? Doesn't have to be true, hmm? you're just imagining this. She's got a big smile. Big smile. Yeah. Now that's something worth remembering. Hmm? Do you like her smile? Yeah. I think any time you look in the mirror, <coughs> you have a chance of seeing it. <laughs> And what else do you see about her when you look at her? Um, She's got a big smile. What do her eyes look like? Big brown. Yeah. Big brown <coughs> eyes. Yeah. And you smile when you say that. You make a connection there. <laughs> How's this experience for you? Yeah. Is it okay? Yeah. And if you were to just imagine that you look at your mother's smile, <coughs> you look at her big brown eyes, if you were to look past her, look at the wall or the ceiling, could you imagine that you could see some things there? Some furniture or some <coughs> pictures on the wall or something? Or a light on the ceiling? Can you imagine that? Um. 
I'm in, I think, in her bedroom. <laughs> and it's kind of purple. Yeah, you can imagine that. <coughs> mm. what's, what's purple? Um, the rim kind of around the bed head. Yeah. Purple rim. Mm. Yeah. And there's a slight smile when you see that. Huh. You enjoy seeing that? <coughs> yeah. When you look around, what else do you see? Um, <coughs> and there's a photo of her and in on the wall. Yeah, yeah. That Dad took. Yeah. <coughs> What's the frame like? I think it's purple too. Ah, okay. <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> purple room around the, the bed. Yeah. The purple frame. And She's wearing a purple. Wearing a purple gown thing. thing. <laughs> she must have known. It was that a hippie do thing. An and <laughs> she must have done some age preparation. Yeah. She must have known about that. And you know, you could look around and see all kinds of other things. You could yeah. look at the <coughs> light. There might be some purple there, or there might, you might look at the carpet, or the cupboard, or something. There's all sorts of things that you could look around there. Yeah. And you might enjoy looking around there. I also wonder if you might enjoy uh, if your mother put you down and took your hand and you went for a walk around the house. Would you enjoy that? Mm. Yeah? <coughs> Where are you walking? I don't know if I can I walk here? <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, Perhaps you can't. I don't know. <coughs> Does it feel like you can or not? Yeah, I guess I can waddle a bit. Waddle a bit? Is yeah. that okay? Yeah. Okay. A waddly, balloony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. So you're waddling <coughs> along there and you're looking, what do you, you look up, gosh, isn't your mother huge? Uh, hmm? Like a giant. Yeah, but she's pretty. Yeah. Yeah. She is pretty. Yeah. And there's something about seeing how pretty she is. that's such an important memory for you to have. And you look through, as you're walking, waddling through the rest of the house, what are you waddling around now? What are you, where are you, where are you now? <coughs> Go into the garden. Mm. Yeah. What's out here? Um, there's not much. Mm. So, um, actually, there's, I think there's manicured lawns. Right. So. <laughs> Now, when you look at the lawn, have you got shoes on or are you barefoot? Uh, barefoot. Barefoot. When you feel the lawn, what does that feel like? And a bit cold, a bit, yeah, a bit cold. Damp, moist. Bit damp, a bit moist, yeah. And is your mother still holding your hand? Yeah. Yeah? And you can feel her hand? Um, yeah. You're not too sure about that? Mm, no. <coughs> I think she wants to pick me up again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is that okay? Yeah. You don't mind being cuddled by your mother instead of having to feel that cold, moist <laughs> lawn yet? Is that agreeable? Yeah. Okay. So she picks you up. And can you look around? What else do you see out in the garden? Um, there's this kind of starting of a like a palm thing, yeah. tree. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. What else do you say? Um, sw the swings and yeah. seesaw. Uh -huh. mm. The fence? Mm-hmm. Yeah, what's the fence look like? It's dark brown, dark wooden. Brown. Mm -hmm. And has the fence got, is the wood going up and down or side to side? Up and down. Up and down. <coughs> okay. mm. It's quite a lot out here, isn't it? Mm. It's the fence and the, the lawn and swings. Yeah. 
Say so. It's weird because, like, the way the garden is now, yeah. like now, now, yes, <laughs> is very different yeah. to what it was. Then now. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. And you can have both of those, how it is now, now, how it was then, now and know that it's different, but you can still enjoy the memory of that, can't you? Mm. You can't know how accurate your memory is unless you can see some photos. And even then you can't be absolutely sure. But you can have the feeling. Mm. And you have the memory of that feeling. You've also got the memory of the purple clothes and purple other things. And how real they are or not, is that's not the important thing. The important thing is remembering your mother's big brown eyes. Remembering her smile. The way she wanted to cuddle you. And the way that you enjoyed and really loved that experience of being cuddled by her. Now you can keep that memory. Mm. Don't need to be scared of that one. Mm. Don't need to cover that one up. It's a very precious memory, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. And it wouldn't surprise me if <coughs> you were to find yourself from time to time looking at photographs of you and your mother or your mother here, there, different places. If when you look at those photos, that you could let yourself feel some of this feeling and let yourself remember some of this feeling. And I don't know whether that will let you remember other feelings as well, will let you remember other experiences as well, other pictures, frames, furniture, gardens, events. I don't know if that will happen, whether you'll actually remember them, but what <coughs> you can be certain of is that you can remember this good feeling. And I wonder, if you were to imagine that time could pass, instead of being that little balloony, cuddled Linda, <coughs> did you bring that memory and the feeling of that as if that's a part of you and you bring that into the botanical gardens? And you bring that into that first kiss. And you bring that into the experience of being here today with us. And if you were to even take it into your future, 10, 20, 40, 60, who knows how far into the future, it really doesn't matter. But know that that memory can be a thread and you can look forward to that because it's a part of you, is it not? And it's there even if you don't notice it, even if you don't, if you're unaware that it is, it still is a part of you. Just like if you forget what you ate for lunch yesterday, or three weeks ago, or 73 days ago. It's not, you probably could remember those things if you wanted. But the important thing to know is that you're nourished by them. Like you'll be nourished by other meals in the future. 
and that you have more memories than you know of really good feelings. Feelings of closeness, feelings of being cuddled, feelings of being loved, loving. And you can take those into your future. I don't know whether you know yet who you're going to be doing all that cuddling with, all that loving with. You don't need to know yet, unless you do. But you can already look forward to it. And bringing some of that into your kissing, which will be so different from that first kiss. <laughs> Yeah. 